Let's suggest that your company is made up of lots of different divisions and each of those divisions sell to the same company. You've been asked to get a complete picture of the entire customer base. So you've asked each of the divisions to send in their data. Unfortunately, they each call the customers by different names. It might be Wix Limited, Wix LTD, Wix Sys with an apostrophe. There's just different ways to say the same company name. So you've got to clean up that data. Well, the easiest way might be with a find and replace values, but you need to do a lot of find and replace actions. And that's what we're looking at in this video, how you can do a mass find and replace based on a list. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here you can see the example data that we are working with. So AI gate limited, there's no problem, but Magic Marvin in another division might be called Marvin Hilton. Sarah Toot might be called Sarah Toot Trading as Epic Designs. Whittlesborough Lodge Limited might be Whittlesborough Lodge Limited, but just LTD. And you might get Wix's Limited, Wix's with an apostrophe, or Wix Limited with LTD rather than Limited. So we've got all these different ways of spelling the same company name across all these divisions. Now to make this find and replace exercise easy, we've created a list. Here's the list of the items we want to find and here's the list of what we want to replace them with. We've got our data in Power Query and I've loaded this table of find and replace into Power Query. So let's head over and take a look. Okay, so we've got our two queries here. One's called data, the other is called find replace. And find replace has column names of find and replace. That is relevant. We will need those in a few moments time. Now initially, let's just undertake a replace values action just so we can steal the syntax. I'll click on the name column, go to transform, replace values, replace values again. In here, value to find, let's call this find this. It doesn't matter what we put in here and replace with, and then I'll click okay. So really we just want this syntax up here. We're going to replace all of these elements. Changed type is the name of the previous step. Find this is the text that we entered. Replace with is also the text that we entered. And then name is the name of the column which we applied the transformation to. I'm going to press Control C to copy that. And then we can delete that step. Okay, now comes the tricky part. We're going to use the list.accumulate function in Power Query. This does not appear in any of the user interface. So we are going to have to write it ourselves by hand. The good news is there's a really good post by Rick de Groot about the list.accumulate function. So you'll find a link below to his post on gorilla.bi. Right, let's write this formula ourselves. I'll click on the add step icon and let's expand the formula bar. I'm going to delete the name of that previous step. Let's start with our function list.accumulate and then I'll open the bracket. Our first argument is a list. This is the list that we want to perform this action over. So we have a list. That is the list of items that we want to find. However, what we want to create is a list of numbers that represent each of those items. So in curly brackets, starting at zero, and then I'll place two dots to create a list. So I want to create a list from zero all the way up to the list dot count. And that is the list of our find replace table and of the find column. Now let's suggest that we had six items in our find column. That means that list dot count would return six. However, Power Query starts counting from zero. So therefore we do need to minus one from that to make sure that we get the right number of items. Okay, the next argument is the seed. This is what are we starting with? Well, we want to start with a table. So that table will be our changed type table, the name of our previous step, hash changed type. Next, we need to create an accumulator function. And this accumulator function has two arguments in it. The first is state and the second is current. So as we loop through this list, our current will represent whatever number we're currently on. So it will start at zero the first time it loops, then the second time it loops, it will go to one. The next time it loops, it will go to two. And it keeps going until 
it's looped through all of the items in our list.count minus one. Now the state is the result at the end of each of those loops. So we're going to start with change type. Then the next time it will be whatever the result is after that first loop. Then the next time what the result is after that second loop. Okay, so let's see how we can use this. Right, I'll insert the arrow that we need for a function. And then we're going to paste the text that we copied earlier. Now we don't need the equal sign. So we're going to loop through each time, which means that each time we loop, we want the table that we're looping on to be our state. So the initial state will be our change type. And then as I said, each time we loop, that state will then update. Next, we have the find this. This is the value that we want to find. Well, in our find replace table, we have our find column, and we want to get whichever record is in the position that we're currently looping through. So therefore, we're going to use the word current. Next, we have the replace with. What text we want to replace it with? Again, we're going to use our find replace table. And this time we want to use the replace column. So which item do we want from our replace column? Well, whichever item we're looping through, and that is the value current. Now we're not going to change our replacer.replace text function, and we're still performing this action on the name column. And there you can see we've got our close bracket for our list.accumulate. And when we commit that, you can see that all of our data is now clean. Magic Marvin appears twice, Sarah Toot is spelt correctly every time, Whittlesborough Lodge Limited and Wix Limited, all those items have now been cleaned. Well, that's it. That's how we can replace multiple values in Power Query based on a list. It got a little bit hairy there as we were working through that list.accumulate function, but hopefully you can see that it's a really powerful function. So it's worth spending the time trying to see how we can use that to build this looping type functionality. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to find out when there's more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.